Good morning, everybody. My name is Anita Martell. I am the Kentucky MCH coordinator, and I also help with CFR administration. Um, I'll be taking questions throughout, but if you could just type them in for me as they occur, I'll break at certain points and we can get those out of the way after certain points. Uh, otherwise, we'll all be experiencing nasty feedback and I get enough of that. I hope everyone can see everything that I'm doing. Um, you'll see a picture of the Catalyst user guide. I'm hoping that you all have your copy in front of you. Uh, the one that I sent you that includes the codes for all of the packages. I'll be going through the processes. So you'll be seeing the process on your com computer screen and you can just follow along in your uh, user guide. The first thing you notice is that the links on your user guide, in, if you open it on your computer, are live links. If you click on them, you'll be able to go wherever you need to go. Give me a second and I'll log in. This is how you log in. All right, if you have any questions about logging in, please list those right now. And we'll, as I said, we'll get to those later. The first thing we're going to look at are work plans. I am not going to show you everybody's work plans. I'm going to go into KDPH. When you, when you sign on to this section, make sure that your health department is the contractor name defaulting. If not, select it from the list as I did. And then make sure that you're in the proper contract year. You can look up any previous year that you wish to, um, but for current work, you wanna make sure that you're on the current year. Then click find. Even if it pop it's populated at the bottom, make sure that it's populated with the proper information by clicking the word, the find button. You can enter your goal by selecting it from the drop down menu. Of course, MCH 124 cross cutting no longer exists. So if you select that, it's, it's going to allow you to choose packages, but they aren't gonna count for anything. So select something that's current. We'll go with children and adolescents, and then you click on whatever package you've chosen for your health department and click new. If it isn't populated down here, you will click new. If it is populated down here, then you do not need to choose your goal and activity. You can just go down here and choose whatever it is that you want to take a look at. And there you are. When you're first entering your work plans, this will be blank and you'll have to Go to the drop down for the goal and select it again. Go to the drop down for the activity and select it again and enter all of your information, including your SMART objective. The approved and not approved, those are buttons for me. 
when I'm approving your work plans after your director emails me to say that it's been done, I go in here and approve or disapprove the SMART objective. And in this box, I'll enter the date and that I've approved the work plan. Then I will click save and it takes me back here. The same thing will happen for you. You click save when you're entering your work plans and it brings you back here and you can go and enter a new plan for a new package until you've got everything that you want under here. Let's go to your outputs and events. Make sure again that you are the contractor. Select your contract year. Select your goal and activity from the drop down box. In the activity box, you'll see asterisks next to the, the packages that you've chosen already in your work plan. Those are the packages that you'll be responsible for reporting on throughout the year. So you need to select that. And if it isn't populated down here, you're going to select new for the first time. Enter the month that you're reporting on. Enter the number of events, of events you're reporting. Select your region. I don't need to select because I'm DPH. But, and then you enter a description of your events. So we'll say I did two um, education classes. And I did three presentations. So I'm going to list the education classes at ABC school, eighth grade. And I did three presentations for ABC school administrators. In order to be allowed to do those education classes. I'm going to say I, I did 127 children in those two classes total. And then I'm going to list the administrators as six in the others, and it was one school. Make sure that you put the numbers reached in the audience, please. If you were attending a meeting and all you did was attend that meeting, you will not put the number reached in here in audience because you didn't reach anybody. But if you go to a meeting and you did a presentation at that meeting as part of their agenda, then you're going to put however many people attended that meeting. Likewise, if you attended a conference, you're not going to put the number of people who attended that conference with you. However, if you did a workshop at the conference and you reached 300 people, throughout the day doing several workshops, then you would put those 300 people in your audience. I hope that helps clarify some things. Once you enter your audience, your description, the number of events, and so forth, you're going to click update, and then it'll populate down here. After you click update, then you click save. If you do not do both, it will not save your entry and you'll have to re-enter 
that creates more work and more time for you. And that's what we're trying to avoid. If you have a question about the, the type of activity you're entering for a package, you can refer back to the package by clicking up here and opening a copy of the package. And you can see all of the reportable activities as well as everything else that's applicable in the package. If you have any questions about outputs and events or about work plans, let me have those now. If you could type them in, I'll be looking for them. I'll give you um, five minutes. Yes, I turned the sound off to allow time for questions. I do have a question. It says, it is not necessary to enter any dollar amount in our reporting each month. That is correct. This year, we are not requiring you to enter any budget information except in the work plan um, where you're dispersing your allocation. But in your monthly activity reports, no, you do not need to enter your budget information. Um, I get reports from our accounting uh, department here, which saves you some time and some work, hopefully. Any other questions? Okay, we're gonna start back up again then. Oh, is it okay to enter the monthly budget as we have in the past? Absolutely, if you choose to, you, you certainly may do that. And I will compare it with what is reported to my accounting department and the report that I get from them each month. We were just looking for ways to streamline reporting um, to take some of the burden off of you all. We know how many hats you have to wear. We know how many hats we have to wear. And <laughs> the number of hats you wear certainly outweighs ours. So yeah, we're, we're just trying to make things as simple and um, gentle as possible while still meeting the requirements of the federal grant. 
Any other questions before we move forward? Okay. As you've noticed, there are now codes attached to your packages. Um, and they, they go from number 200 to 203 for the infant mortality packages, um, and then 204 and 205 for women and maternal health, and then from 206 to 210 for children and adolescent health. Um, <clears throat> Those codes are the reason that you are not being required to report your budgets in Catalyst any longer. Um, what our accounting department has done is set those codes up so that when you code expenses to a package, I'm able to receive a report that shows what expenses have been coded to that package and I'll be able to compare it to your activity reports and catalysts to see if they align. And because of the fact that this is part of the Title V block grant dollars, I have to do that every month in case we are ever audited. Then you're covered and we are covered. So the codes are very important. And please be careful what you code to the packages. Um, I've had issues with people coding things like di um, diabetes education and breastfeeding education. Those are two totally separate funding streams and they belong to different cost centers. And for those of you who are having issues with what can be coded and what can't be, please contact me. I'm always available for questions. I will never feel that your questions are an imposition. So if, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to ask. On page 12 of your uh, user guide, you will see several uh, SMART objective examples. And there should be one example for every package. Please use that as a guide for setting up your work plans. If you um, look at your, your table of contents, on your user guide, a lot of your process questions would be answered if you go to the page related to the subject of your, your question. If you don't find it, by all means, email me and I will take care of your question as best I can. If I can't find an answer, I will contact someone who can and one way or another, I'll get you an answer. Some of the reports that I look at when I'm reviewing your activities are over here on the toolbar. If you go under reports and look at work plans, I'll go into the work plan summary I want to show you what this what these look like. Okay, if if I look at your work plan, this is what I see without going into the work plan itself. 
this is a report that I can print out and provide to all of the programs. So, for example, Trina Miller does prenatal and healthy babies. I would provide a work plan report for her if, like on this one, we have healthy babies. So if they, if you've chosen any of her packages, this would go to her. Um, it would also go to Angela Brown for the prenatal or perinatal infant mortality packages. And then it would go to Nicole Barberkop for the children and adolescents. And it would go to Dr. Julie McKee for the fluoride varnish package. So I am able to share with the programs who has what packages and they'll be able to contact you themselves if they have any questions about any of your reports. I also share other information. Well, took myself out. Please bear with me. I also share other information with the programs. For example, I go into plan versus actual detail and I'll click on include output journal. These are reports that you can get for your health department as well. And this is what I see. Obviously, I don't have any activities reported. This is just for testing and to show you what things look like. This is the entry that I just put in today. And this is what your reports would look like, except obviously more populated. But as I said, you can access this yourself and see where you are and compare it to your package and what steps you have to take in order to satisfy your work plan. So look at your package activities. Let's take safe sleep. There are your targets, your populations that you should be reporting audience numbers for. These are the activities that you should be reporting. This is how you report. And these are the links to your resources that have been approved. And then you've got your guide for what's allowable and what is not. Also, if you wanted to go back into your work plan and take a look at that, you can click on your SMART objective and open up the detail. And over here is your SMART objective. So you've got an idea of what your work plan is, where you're at with the work plan, and how much further you need to go in order to get to your goals and objectives for the work plan throughout the year. It helps with your planning. Are there any questions about this so far? If you have questions, please type them in. I'm going to allow three minutes.
All right, no questions, so we are back. If you would take a look at page 18 in your user guide, you will see the beginning for entering activity results in, into Catalyst. Are you there? Okay, good. I want you to notice the goal again. We'll take perinatal this time. And since I've already entered once for each of my perinatal goals, I don't need to do it again. So the asterisk is down here. Now, what you can do if you get to this point and you don't know exactly how to enter your description is, again, refer back to your package, open it up, and take a look at your activities. What step are you looking to report on? If you're on step one, Just highlight it. You can even link, but just highlight it. I can get it, sorry. Like I said, bear with me, I'm doing this by myself. <laughs> so highlight what you've done, click copy. Go back to your entry and right click again and paste. And there, there it is. And let me know how many people did this. If three staff attended that, then you're going to enter three staff. You're going to, again, click update. And then again, you're going to click save and you see it's populated down here where it needs to be. Let's do one more. We'll go to um, children and adolescents. We'll go to bullying and suicide prevention. Click new since it isn't there yet. And let's choose our month. We're going to go to a different month. We'll, we'll do September. And we'll do two events. Select your region. And in the box for your activity, if you aren't sure, again, go, go to the package. Go to the, the step that you've done and highlight. This is if you don't know how to explain the activity that you did. Most of the time, you are going to know how to explain it. You did a presentation for school officials. You did classes to educate children, or you did classes to educate staff. Um, notice the difference between education and presentation. Education, you're teaching a skill. Presentation, you're presenting information. You're trying to obtain buy-in for a program or a project. 
So be careful how you report things. And then again, don't forget to enter your audience numbers in the correct categories. You're going to click update and you're going to click save. I'm not going to save this. Does everyone understand how to um, enter your activities and package codes for budget purposes? When you're coding your time, you're going to code to specific packages. Makes sense so far? Okay, great. The next thing you're going to do when you're entering activities, once you've got, once you have your output centered, which should be outcome focused. So if you tell me, if you report that you attended such and such a meeting, what was the outcome of the meeting? Um, was it that you were able to network with uh, possible community partners? Was it that you distributed educational materials for that for use with uh, community partner clients? Um, did you do a presentation as part of their agenda? What was the outcome of the meeting? What was the outcome of the um, education class. Did 50 children become educated in, in oral hygiene? Did 20 children learn about healthy eating through a farmer's market event? Those are the kinds of outcomes that we need to have and the numbers are vital in order to get the dollars to Kentucky. So please, please, please report your audience numbers accurately. Okay, the next, the next thing in the results window after outputs is key partners. If you click on that, you're going to enter uh, a community organization or someone that you partnered with. So we're going to say ABC school, for example. What did they contribute? Cash, food, materials, a meeting space, other volunteer hours. So let's say this community partner, ABC school, is allowing you to use their cafeteria for um, meeting with teenagers to develop a um, bullying and suicide prevention theme for their school for uh, hanging up on bulletin boards and different events that they would like to see in their school. So you, you enter that information, um, team meetings, and strategizing. Click update. You see it populates and you save it. Now, if you weren't done with that, you can go back in. If you did an event, for example, that generated some media you're gonna, of course, select your month. Let's say it was earned. You didn't have to pay for the advertising and it was done in the newspaper. Um,
Um, <clears throat> Okay. And if you have any more information that you want to enter, enter it here, and then you click update and it comes in here. The evaluation piece of it is done at the end of the year. And it looks like this. You put your completion month, which if it's a school-based program, chances are it's gonna end in May um, when school lets out. Sometimes it'll go through the summer um, because some schools have summer school and uh, others have activities throughout the year. So you're going to enter whether or not you met your SMART objective, you need to enter any outcome information, whether you recommend it, why you recommended it, and if there were any other outcomes or especially policy related, for example, tobacco-free schools, bullying prevention, can be incorporated into policy, coordinated school health can be incorporated into policy, and any of the safe sleep and infant mortality packages can be incorporated into policies for daycare centers. So all of this information needs to be entered and as detailed as possible for the evaluation. This is how we rebuild um, packages and base it on needs, base it on what you report to us. If we don't get honest feedback here, we can't develop the packages to suit your needs. And that's what we're after. We need to suit your needs. Okay, I'm going to take a couple of minutes to allow you to process what I've given you so far and please type in any questions. If you need to use the restroom, now is the time to do it. I'll be back in about three minutes.
And we're back. Um, there are a few last things that I want to go over with, and obviously this is not going to take as long as I had blocked the time for, and that was done purposely, just in case there were a lot of questions. I want to show you what I do in, when I pull your reports every month. And I need to reiterate with you that after the 20th of the month, please do not submit reports for late. Please do not do that because I will not be able to pick up those numbers because I've already pulled my reports. This is what I do. On the 20th, well, on the first day after the 20th, at 7 o'clock in the morning when I come in, I go to this report. and it only covers the month that I'm pulling. So if I'm pulling July's report, it'll be August 20th that I'm pulling, or the 21st that I'm pulling it because your reports are due by close of business, COB, on the 20th. I'm pulling them on the 21st or the first business day after the 20th. and I pull it by goal, and I pull it by activity. And this is what I get, the numbers. I get an event count and I get an audience count. And I, it also tells me who's reporting and who isn't because I have a list of all of the health departments and what packages have been chosen. I do that for every package. And then I create a spreadsheet using the events and the audience numbers I add that to my spreadsheet and then I go into this report and I see what activities have been reported and I copy those activities into my spreadsheet. My spreadsheet includes materials that have been distributed audience numbers and audience types broken down by, by health department. So each package is represented by one single spreadsheet with a list of all the health departments that chose that package, a list of all the audience that they've reached for that month broken down by health department, and then the type of activity that they reported. And then I have um, barriers and successes listed in a final column, along with budget information that I received from our accounting department. And I also compare that with what's reported in Catalyst. If, if anything, um, again, budget is not required to be reported in Catalyst anywhere except in the work plan. You're not required to put it on your monthly report any longer. 
are there any questions about this and why it's so important to get your numbers in on the 20th and no later? If you have late numbers, what I would prefer that you do instead of adding them after the fact without anyone knowing is put it under the coming month. So if you're entering a, a late number for July and it's August 21st, put that number under August reports. That way it'll get counted and you'll get the credit. It doesn't matter that it's late. What matters is that I get it. So when, when I call you for information, um, numbers and so forth, it isn't because I'm trying to complain or trying to make problems for you. It's because I need the information in order for us to report accurately to, to our federal provider. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about these reports and the, the timeliness of the numbers? And the fact that I want late numbers to be put on the next month's reports so that they'll be picked up. If you have any questions at all about this, please type them in. Ah, here we go. Question is, is it okay to, let's see, for activities performed after the 20th of the month, do we report the next month? Yes. I have several activities scheduled at the end of the month and want to be sure they get counted. Yes, you can, you can definitely put them in the next month's report and in your description section, um, just put that you're reporting them in, say, August for July. Um, that way, we know that they, they should have gone in July, but they came after the 20th. And that's through no fault of yours. It's just we need to be able to report those numbers. So once the 20th is gone, just put them in for the following month and they're not considered late. Uh, the, the only late numbers are the ones that I'm unable to pick up because I don't know that they're there. They were put in after the fact and they're not getting picked up. When reporting for each month, the data runs from first day of the month to the last day, right? Yeah, or you can just run it from the first day to the 20th if you choose to, and then from the 21st on, um, put that as the next month automatically. Um, if you want to do it that way, you can certainly do it that way. If child fatality, child death review activities get emailed to you and they do not go in the catalyst, what gets reported under CFR and catalyst? Uh, nothing gets reported in catalyst for CFR except the work plan. Uh, the only way that we have to track work plans and smart objectives for CFR is through Catalyst at this point in time. Um, but everything else gets reported on that spreadsheet that Angela Brown sent you and that gets emailed to me every month. Um, I'm still responsible for those reports. Does that make sense? 
I hope. Any other questions? Okay, here's one. If there are no events to report, but expenses were for claimed for correspondence and planning, is that what we should enter for the program? Absolutely, that's called administrative. Um, if you are contacting schools and trying to schedule classes, if you are networking with um, community or possible community partners through community organizations, by all means, those are all reportable activities. It's called administration, coordination, networking. Um, do not undervalue your time and your efforts to get the planning and creative processes done. It's all part of this program. That's why it's called MCH coordination. We don't provide direct services. We assure that the services are being provided. We provide outreach, we provide education, we provide prevention. And part of those activities our coordination. Any other questions? Okay. Look on your user guide on page 25 and you'll see some um, catalyst terminology that I use very frequently, uh, especially in the user guide and in any of my trainings. I'm hoping that this will help clarify some things um, because just because it's a term that I know and understand and my teammates here at DPH know and understand doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate out throughout the state. So I've, I've picked up a couple of things that I think, I think might be helpful to you, I hope. Uh, the, other, the other thing I wanted to point out are, there are some helpful hints on page 26 and some valuable links. The, um, the MCH Title V block grant and the MCH AR link, the last time I checked, which has been a couple of weeks, they were working. If they do not work for you and you need the information, please let me know so I can send everyone updated links. Um, I try to keep up with all the links on, on all of my documents and sometimes they just change too fast to keep up with them. So if you notice anything um, amiss, please let me know. Also, if you go to page 27, you will see a list of how to contact me and all of our team here at DPH. Um, it also tells you what packages we are each responsible for. So if you ever need to get in touch with any of us for any reason, by all means, you can contact me first and I'll put you in touch with my teammates. Um, but it also, you know, you can contact them directly as well. 
last chance for questions and then I'm going to close it. Five minutes. Oh, sorry, three minutes. Question, is there any way a category can be added that would cover the coordinator's time to the MCH programs? This person may not actually have a direct package, but is the overall coordinator. Yes, um, you can split the time between the packages. You can choose the package that this person um, referred to or worked on with their team the most. Um, but yes, it, it would be considered coordination and administrative costs. You could also consider it a part of the indirect costs that's attributed to packages. I hope that helps. Please let me know if um, you still have questions about that. Yes, you can you can definitely put that through as indirect costs. <laughs> I, I knew what you meant. You're welcome, I hope that helps. Anyone else? Did I miss any questions or did I not answer anyone's question? I thank you all very much for attending. Um, this will be archived and available for referral uh, back to it throughout time if, if you need to. And of course, you've also got the user manual. You have access to me. I'm easier to contact via email um, because I'm not always at my desk. Today is a good example. So just shoot me an email. If you need anything at all at any time, please do not hesitate. It's what I'm here for. And I really do enjoy talking with all of you. I enjoy interacting with you and I enjoy the innovation you have all shown. It's, it's just incredible. I thank you so much for all that you do. Again, if you need anything, just let me know. Take care. <laughs>